All right, this video is going to continue the discussion of what predicts attraction. And we're going to focus in this video on what many, many of my students will see as the least romantic or maybe the least sexy out of the bunch, mere exposure or proximity is a related term. Uh, mere exposure is the tendency to like things and people more the more we are exposed to them. So you're more likely to be attracted folks you see more often. So just sitting next to somebody, living next to somebody, uh, having the same uh, bus route where you are frequently riding the bus or the subway or the train at the same time. We don't like this one because it doesn't fit with our romantic notions, but yeah, yeah, th that increases your likelihood of attraction. Just seeing someone often. Uh, and a uh, related concept is proximity, also known as propinquity. And this is exposure due to people being in the same physical area. So this is specific to physical area. Uh, um, mere exposure is, you know, more broad, more general. Uh, you know, like you can, you, can, you can know somebody, be exposed to somebody in different ways. But propinquity or proximity is specific to being in the same physical area. And this always makes me think of how when I was younger, when I was in um, elementary school, particularly in middle school, a lot of my teachers were huge fans of alphabetical seating. They would seat us in alphabetical order. And so there were certain people that I would never get to talk to because their last name started with A or B. I had a last name starting with an S. And so I always got to get to know, you know, the, the people at the end of the alphabet, those, those A and B people up there in the front. I'm like, who are they? They're in my class. I never get to interact with them. They're always way over there up in the front of the class. And I would often get jealous because they got to sit in the front where they could hear and see. And I often was in the back somewhere where I could not hear as well or see as well. All right, folks, don't do alphabetical seating order. Many people hate it, especially those at the end of the alphabet. But another thing about that was that uh, there was this one person who always ended up sitting in front of me. So my last name started with S-O. And there was another person whose last name started with S-M. There was no S-N at my school, apparently. But oh my gosh, this person sat in front of me for like every single class. Um, and it, I, I found them quite annoying. All right. And, and, and S-M, you know who you are probably if you ever happen to see this. Um, you know, no insult, no, no, no hate to you. But hey, we were like 12 years old and I did find you annoying. You talked a lot in class. You disrupted. You interrupted a lot in class and you insulted me a lot. All right. And so, you know, he, and he would and he would he would do things like he would insult, he would tease. Um, and then over time, it gets time for like, you know, we're having a school dance. He asked me to the school dance. You know? And it's one of those things. And we and we did we did we did do some dating. It, it didn't it didn't work out. It wasn't a good foundation. But I often wonder if that, you know, the idea of like, hey, should I, who should I ask? Well, there's this person who's always seated, seated right behind me. And I always, uh, you know, and there were some times where we even had class projects where they would be like, all right, so the people in front of you and behind you, they're your group for this project. I'm like, oh, I got this person in my group again. You know, that sort of stuff. Uh, so, you know, I always think of that in terms of proximity or propinquity. It was like, would I... Would I, would I have interacted as much with that person if I had not been forced to sit behind them for so many classes, you know, just always there? Um, another thing is like, you know, living next to each other. When you hear people dating uh, their neighbor, their next door neighbor, the person in the apartment nearby, uh, you know, that's, that certainly can be explained by this sort of effect. Um, so the more we know people, the more we're around them, the more we tend to like them. Now, this does not guarantee that you will like them, but it increases the odds. It increases the likelihood. Now, there was one, uh, one known study in this area, sort of your, one of your classic studies by Fessinger. Yes, Fessinger is associated with a lot of classic studies in social psychology. 
He also did the cognitive dissonance study, study of cults. Yeah, his name comes up a lot. And so in 1950, 1950, Fessinger and colleagues, uh, they did, uh, they conducted a study in a, uh, a housing complex, the Westgate Housing Study. And in the Westgate Housing Study, you know, people, uh, there were two stories. And so you had people living on different floors and different locations relevant to things like the stairs, the elevator, the drink machine, stuff like that. And so they wanted to look at, um, I know the light is just all of a sudden coming in and ah, I'm, about, I'm about to ascend to, and I, all right. So in the Westgate housing study, they wanted to look at the residents and see which ones did they get to know? Which ones, you know, which ones did they become more than just, than just neighbors with? And so they looked at things like physical distance, physical distance and functional distance, right? So physical distance is like the actual like number of, uh, like you actually measure with a ruler, all right? So physical distance, it could be that somebody is just a few feet away from you in the housing complex, but if you can't actually access their apartment without uh, going around or having to go down a set of stairs and then go up another set of stairs, you have a different functional distance. Functional distance has to do with the design of the space and how often people actually see one another. Um, because, you know, if you've ever lived in a big apartment complex or a dorm, you know, somebody might be on the other side of the wall to you, but you can't actually access them uh, without uh, doing extra things, you know, having to, to take, I know in one dorm that I lived, with, lived in in college, uh, we had two wings. There was a boy's wing and a girl's wing. It was a single co-ed dorm. And sometimes I would make a, meet a friend and I'd be like, oh, we are actually on the other side of the wall from each other, but we couldn't actually access each other without getting on an elevator, going down eight floors to the ground floor, getting on another elevator uh, with an escort, because you couldn't, you couldn't have, you couldn't go on the boy's side without an escort. You might get up to no good, you know. And then we'd have to go up the elevator, and then actually, and then go down to their room. And so, you know, that's, it's like the physical distance was very small, but the functional distance was much greater. And so what they found in the study that residents at the bottom of staircases, so think functional distance, you are at the bottom of the staircase, people have to use the stairs, they're going to see you, you are in a place where, oh, hey, high traffic. So people at the bottom of staircases were seen the most and liked the most by their neighbors. All right, it's an, it's an advantage to be in the high traffic area. Uh, residents, in, uh, the, residents in the harder to reach areas were liked the least uh, because they were in locations that were isolated, that it was hard to get to the way the building was set up. All right, this also makes me think of when I, um, uh, I used to work at a department store. I used to work at JCPenney in the 90s and I was the switchboard receptionist. And the thing is, JCPenney, it's a huge department store. There are many people who would work there and they wouldn't get to know the other people who work there because they might work on a different floor. They might work in another department way on the other end of the floor that they did work on. Uh, a lot of times people would be friends with those in their department. And sometimes they would be friends with the people in the department right next to them. But they wouldn't even know, you know, the people that were kind of far away in terms of the actual department store itself. Now, I was the switchboard receptionist, and so I had a desk that everybody had to pass by to clock in. Every single person who worked at the store, they would pass by and they'd be like, oh, hey there. And sometimes if they had arrived early and they had the time, they might ask me about my day. They might have a conversation with me. And those who had similarity with me to overlap with the an earlier concept, you know, like maybe they were similar age, maybe they went to the same college I did that you know, at the time I was attending college, uh, you know, and they, or they, they might even see that I brought some of my textbooks with me because I would come straight from school and they'd be like, oh, I'd taken that class. And so there were lots of opportunities for them to strike up a conversation with me because of where I was. The actual location of my desk was in a high traffic area. So a lot of the people who worked at that, and I'm not a particularly social 
social person. I'm not an extrovert. And so, uh, you know, if I've been working in any other department, I might not have made that many friends. But I did make a lot of friends simply because it was so easy. I was right there. And they're like, oh, hey, how are you doing? Let's talk to each other. Let's get to know each other. Oh, we have similarities too. Let's be friends, right? So, you know, good examples about how mere exposure or proximity, aka propinquity, can increase your likelihood of attraction. And sometimes students will say, well, no, that, you know, you don't just like people because they're nearby. But think of it this way. If you never have a chance to meet somebody, if you never have a chance to be exposed to somebody in the first place, you're not going to develop an attraction for them. You have to have the exposure. The exposure is kind of like a minimum that you have to have. And if somebody doesn't impress you the first time, like you don't see somebody, you're like, oh my gosh, I must meet that person. They're amazing. And that often doesn't happen except maybe in movies. All right. But you know, the more exposure they have, the more opportunities you have to get to know somebody and then attraction can develop. All right. Next video is going to be about the other of the big three, physiological arousal, acknowledging that the body plays a part.